from protests in cities and suburbs uh, to division throughout the international community, the Israel-Gaza war is polarising the world. And you might not think that there is much to laugh about, but can satire, can irony be used to prompt a different kind of conversation or provoke better understanding even? You may already have seen one of the more prominent pieces of online media discussing this current conflict. It came from the Egyptian-American comedian, Bassem Youssef. 88 Israelis were died and there was 2,329 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, Palestinians. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today well, I, so I, you guys will be happy? Uh, that's Bassam Yusuf there. He was talking to the British broadcaster, Piers Morgan, about the violence in the Middle East. That half-hour interview has since been watched millions of times online. It inspired then a second 90-minute sit-down interview with Piers Morgan, which has also been watched by millions of people. Bassam Yusuf is this week in Australia for a run of shows. And he's in the studio with me this morning. Uh, Bassam Yusuf, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Piers Morgan, Why? <laughs> why why not i mean actually piers i know like he's a little bit of a controversial character but like he's actually off camera he's very charming actually i enjoy talking to him off camera he's a he, he was a, he, i was invited to be on his show to talk about the what was happening in gaza and then i declined a couple of times because that that that, that for me was uh, like career suicide to go on but but then as it went on i i said like you know maybe i should uh go up and and say something and uh i i kind of like i had a different approach to it and uh the rest is history <laughs> you used irony yeah uh satire as well i suppose why take that approach when you know quite obviously what's happening in the middle east is is not funny well i mean uh you know what they say they say uh, uh, uh comedy equals tragedy plus time but the thing is like we didn't have time so maybe uh comedy was a good way to intervene because what what satire does is like it 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 shows all of the the madness in the mirror it just like puts a mirror in front of you and uh, satire gets like the reality flips on the head and magnifies it so i did that and and suddenly people who were like calling to kind of like annihilate people that suddenly when you kind of repeat the talking points to them they they will stop and think like wait that's that's too much that's because you say look i actually agree with this i yeah. agree yeah. you know kill the bastards this yeah let, of... let's kill everybody and then suddenly the talking points that have been repeated over and over again even the people who say it's like oh no we we didn't mean this like what, what did you mean like so should we kill half should we kill a quarter how how much so i know it was like dark and it was sad uh, but uh, I think, I mean, it worked because pe people suddenly talked like that. That's, that's not the right way to do it. Uh, the humour, the type of humour, I suppose, that you're using in those interviews, it actually reminded me of Egypt during the revolution. <laughs> Obviously, you were working then as a, as a doctor in Tahrir Square. But it really stood out to me during that time, the way Egyptians used humour in the face of the then Mubarak regime. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was funny because, I mean, it's not funny, it was like weird because you can, we find like uh, tear gas and you had like uh, the brutality of the security forces and all of the people, all people did was going uh, out with uh, signs that were funny and they were like uh, making up chants that were uh, satirical. And uh, that was very powerful because now, uh, I think uh, humour and comedy is actually the most human thing ever. Mm. And when you do that, people look at you, not just like another number, not like another statistic, but like, oh, they are like people who have like lives and families. And and, and, and I know that it's weird like to, to ask people to look at other people as people, just to, they, they stop the madness, stop the violence. But sometimes we need to be reminded by our, with our own, by our own humanity. What, what, what do you mean by that, reminded to see people as people? I know that's a theme that you explored with, with Piers Morgan, but, you know, many will not have seen that, believe it or not. Not everyone in the world has, no, has no. watched that interview. Uh, well, uh, I think when you are exposed to the news, you become desensitised by the violence, by the killing, by, uh, uh, and suddenly it becomes number. It becomes like another thing on the ticker tape. And, uh, and then when you kind of like uh, hit the pause button and just ask people to look at those other people as, as equals, <laughs> as like human beings, not just like a, uh, another 500 people dead in, a, in an airstrike. 
and and, and then suddenly it's like oh they are like us you know and i know that it is it is very sad to kind of like to have to use humor to remind people with that but sometimes it works do you think that's one of the consequences of of the broader instability in the world today that there is just so much bad news and so much human suffering that we collectively become a bit desensitized to well, I mean, look at the uh, average uh, day of any, any anyone in in Europe and Australia. Like they are, they they consume entertainment, they consume uh, sports, and then they have like maybe a few minutes to consume the news. And what do they see in the news? Uh, uh, they they see like the, the pain and the suffering, and so they they have to block it off. And uh, and and this is why maybe satire and humor can work because it puts a magnifying glass on this and say like, imagine this happens to you to your family, no matter how different you think you are from those people, and uh, that's why it is like a constant reminder. Do you find yourself wanting to switch off from the news? Yeah, many times, many times. I mean, uh, I have to say that uh, as much as like I'm very grateful for like the response, but like many people, uh, like whenever I kind of post about my work, about my 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 tour, it's like this is not the right life. I mean, like they, they just want. Uh, There's kind of like you know, like the doomsday scrolling and the doomsday yeah. <laughs> posting, and and I think like I I don't want to do that because again, it will lead to the same problem of desensitization. So because people, at a certain point, people will just like switch off. For that, for all of that, I think some of your wife's family is in Gaza. Yeah, they're in southern Gaza. They are safe for now. We don't know because uh, you never know uh, when they're going to be the, like uh, considered as human shields. So we'll see about that. So you're now based in the United States. Yes, in Los Angeles. Uh, believe it or not, you're here to tell jokes to be funny. I know. I mean, we started very, very like on a bleak note, but like I'm here for comedy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what is making you laugh? Uh, making fun of the absurdity of the words one day at a time. <laughs> I mean, you live in America. There's plenty absurd. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, American politics has, uh, like, and American news has become a circus. And I, I kind of discussed that with peers. I mean, it's not about the news anymore. It's about the people ma do, making the news, doing the news. So it's basically people are uh, tuning in for the circus, mm. for the talking heads, for the uh, for for like two gladiators like fighting together, and people in the college is like, yeah, I get it. And then suddenly you you end the end the program and you haven't actually discussed the, the issue. It just becomes like egos going back and forth. And that's why with the second interview when I sat with Pierce, I, I said like, I, this is not going to be about ego. It's not this is not about me scoring points. It's not about me like doing zingers and sound bites. I, I, let's have a, like a deep conversation and it worked and he responded it was like i think he uh, he was actually surprised uh, by that because uh, for the first time it was not like two people trying to score points over each other or dunking over each other it was just like people having a conversation it was and you see the comments it's like oh this is not a debate this is a conversation and does despite the differences that we had we had a very good civil conversation and i have to thank pierce for that because he responded in in a very civil and 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 appropriate and 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 human way do you think in america particularly though maybe even more broadly that we've lost the ability to have sensible conversations well again it's about ratings it's about circus it's about like uh, getting views and, and 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 the news has become like something that's sensational instead of being informative yeah but is there also something, and maybe this is due to social media today, where we find it more difficult to hear things, consume things that we disagree with? I mean, we obviously encounter it every day covering the conflict in the, in the Middle East, but, but more broadly, people saying, why do I have to listen to this person? Oh, yeah. I don't want to hear these these views. I don't want to hear that side. Well, because like it ends like to the good old rabbit hole. It's like you, 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 you kind of like you, you follow the, the, the views, the people that agree with you. You shut uh, out the people that don't agree with you. And suddenly you're kind of like into this bubble. And that's why flat earthers exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. I didn't realize. <laughs> Tell me about you. Obviously, uh, you're known as this very famous uh, Egyptian comedian, but you now live in America. Do you miss... Egypt, do you do you do you pine for for home? No, I am I'm someone who loved to live uh, in in the moment. Uh, I I'm, I really appreciate living in the United States, living in, the, in Los Angeles. It's a very diverse city, 
and uh, I'm, 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 I'm able to give my children and a unique multicultural experience. And I'm kind of, I mean, of course, like Egypt will always be my country. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm like now living in America. I'm touring around the world. I'm having like a life that I've never imagined 13 years ago when, I mean, the highlight of my day would be like having like a lunch break during my long ER shifts. So I'm, I'm to you be were a surgeon, weren't you? I was a heart surgeon, yeah. And, uh, and, but now you, uh, you kind of like go out and you, 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 you are in theaters in front of like thousands of people and you're sharing a night of laughter and satire and, and, and humanity. And it's beautiful. I mean, coming here to Australia, I came here for just two shows, one show in Sydney and one show in Melbourne. And, uh, thanks to, you know, the couple of interviews, it blew up and now I'm doing nine shows. And uh, I, 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 we sold the in more four times in Sydney, and we are adding uh, one in the uh, on Friday on the uh, uh, Sydney Opera House, which is a dream. Like to have like to perform in Sydney for the first time, and doing the Opera House. Uh, I was there like a little kid, like posing in front of the Opera House, and <laughs> I was making my like I, I was making a fool out of myself. Which you know, what would you we do? <laughs> Do you think that uh, the sort of impact that you have on human lives as a comedian, how does that compare with with the work you did as a doctor? Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, being a nerd. Being a nerd saves you every time. Being like you have to prepare, you have to study. It's about like the, uh, when I when I did the Pierce Morgan interview, I I studied like a nerd. When I uh, when I do comedy, I said like that. Yesterday, I was actually studying a lot about like how can I. Uh, incorporate stuff that I have been noticing about Australia in my 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 set. So I have like a, you know uh, I have my my routine. I have my my special. I travel with it, and I said like, hmm, let's see what we how we can get to Australia. So basically, a huge part of it is basically about Australian quarantine in the airport because it is like incredible. <laughs> it is so Why? funny. I mean, first of all, let's start with the video that you watch on the airplane coming down, right? It's like Australian government. And it's kind of like, so, so I, I feel like a bioterrorist, you know? And <laughs> it, well, it's well, like, well, it's like we don't care about the bombs, but don't bring mud. And 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 and, and then, like, there, <laughs> there's there's this, like, part of the video. Um, I mean, if you come to the show, you're going you're gonna to hear this because you, you you find someone, like the custom, uh, custom officer, opening the bag and then, un, un, uh, banana. It's like, what? It's like, it is like the most threatening video ever. I have never been scared of bananas and apples and, 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 and just like organic items like this. It was scary. And so like, I, I, and now I don't know what to eat. <laughs> uh, I do need to ask, did you, did you bring fruit? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I mean, the, the, it's kind of like, I love the slogan, don't be sorry. <laughs> Declare it. <laughs> and it's like I feel. I feel. I, I'm going into like Australian borders. I'm already. I'm already feeling guilty. Uh, I. I don't know what to eat. Like today at breakfast. Like what do you want to eat? And it's like I feel every food. Like I think like I look at every food item as a threat. I mean, like seriously, if I if you get like a candy and put it in my pocket, I feel like I'm wearing like an explosive belt. It is very, very scary. Well, I hope while you're here, someone <laughs> sits you down and shows you a long-running reality television series called Border Security. But you can <laughs> oh, that's that. a great idea! The the stuff that comes out of the bag, an an uh, banana. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to get to the news, but you're often described as the, the Egyptian John Stewart, The Daily Show, uh, the role. Coming up, Trevor Noah going. Any any chance? I I listen. I I think there are people who are much more equipped to host the uh, the 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 Daily Show. I mean, people there oh, people have on. been like no None no the people this humility Bassam. No no. At the end of the day, English is my second language, and I'm I'm not as quick as I as as I'm in my my, my Arabic language, my my first my native tongue. But like I'm actually enjoying it because I started actually stand up comedy in English only five years ago, and now I'm having a world tour. So I'm happy. I'm grateful. I I can't ask for more. I'm actually very grateful to be here standing with you having this like amazing conversation and we're inviting people to my shows. Like this is the dream. Someone get the man a quarantined banana. Basim Yusuf, thank banana! you very much. <laughs>